Hello, and welcome to Python Programming Practice. In this episode, we are going to be covering Leet Code number 69 called Square Root X. Given a non-negative integer x, compute and return the square root of x. Since the return type is an integer, the decimal digits are truncated, and only the integer parts are returned. So basically, I guess that means we find the square root, but we want to return like rounded down to the nearest integer, like the floor function of the square root. Example, I don't know that we even need examples. We kind of know what the square root is. If x is 4, the square root is 2. If x is 8, the output is actually 2 as well because the square root of 8 is somewhere between 2 and 3. And if we round that down to uh, the nearest integer, well, it's showing us here the square root of 8 is 2.8 whatever. But if we round that down, then it's going to be 2 as well. Um, our constraints are the numbers going to be between 0 and 2 to the 31 minus 1. So we are going to have to be able to handle fairly large numbers here. Now, this is seems like a very simple problem because it's just asking us to do an operation that is just math that Python can just naturally do with either basic imports or just exponentiations. So it seems like they should have really maybe put more instructions as to kind of how you're supposed to approach this problem because there's a few easy ways we could do this without really doing anything interesting. Like for one, we could say an import solution. All you'd have to do is import math to gain access to the square root function, then return root of x. That should be an easy working solution, but of course we need to also do int of that since the problem called for rounding to the nearest integer. That should strip off the decimals and just return the int portion of it. So that should be a working solution. So let's go ahead and submit that one just to get a start on this problem. So let's just pull over and see the result of what that is. We can see just even with that basic submission, I'm assuming lots of other people did that. The runtime was 32 milliseconds, faster than 81% of other Python 3 submissions. Now, in reality, I don't see why you would ever do anything more than this. If you want to do square root in Python, you should just use the square root function. But I guess there is probably other ways to solve this. Now, one other very simple way to do this without even importing math is use exponentiation. So we could say exponent solution. So the square root of a number is the same as that number raised to the one half power. So all we'd have to do is return int of x to the one half. And this should also get us the same answer as what we just did. So let's submit that and it's probably going to result in the exact same everything, but who knows. So for some reason, that run was a little bit quicker than the math one, I guess because we didn't have to import the math module first or something. But so 28 millisecond runtime faster than 92% of other Python 3 submissions. Now, again, these two solutions are probably the easiest and best way to do this. But um, clearly, if you want to make this problem more interesting than just importing something or doing basic exponentiation, you'd actually have to go out and figure out how to find square roots mathematically. And that's something that most people probably have no idea how to do. So I didn't know how to go about manually calculating square roots because I'm not sure that's something I ever learned. I went to Wikipedia and looked up some different ways. Um, so we can look at Wikipedia here, and there's a whole bunch of different methods for finding square roots. Um, I found this thing called the Babylonian method, which is supposed to be one of the first algorithms used for doing this, which is basically an iterative approximation of a square root. 
Basically what it does is starts with some estimate of what the square root is and then iteratively gets closer and closer to the right answer. Um, we don't need to go too big into the details. The most important part of it is this here. It basically says that the method can be represented by this algorithm. So we start with some estimate x0 that's supposed to be somewhat close to the square root of s or whatever number you're working with. Um, it actually doesn't have to be close to it. It just means that if it, the closer your initial estimate is to the square root, the faster it will converge. But it doesn't actually have to be that close. We can just use whatever initial estimate we want to. And then we just keep updating this estimate based on this formula. So the next estimate, which is x n plus 1, we start with x of 0, n plus 1 of 0 would be 1, but then we go to the second estimate, third estimate, and so on. So the next estimate after whatever initial one we have is equal to 1 half times that current estimate plus s divided by the current estimate, where this value s is the number that we're finding the square root of. And then mathematically, this method will converge on the square root as you go through more and more iterations. That's what this is saying here. It's saying the square root of our number is actually equal to this value xn in the limit as n goes to infinity. So basically, as we're doing more iterations and we keep doing this update, this number will get closer and closer to the square root of our target until enough iterations and it'll basically be effectively the same thing. So I thought for an exercise it could be interesting to try to code up this algorithm as a solution to the square root problem, even though you would never actually want to do this if you're having to calculate square roots in Python. So let's go ahead and try this. So it's going to be called the Babylonian method. Um, and we don't want to have to deal with cases where the target is too small, because when x is 1 and x is 0, things get a little weird. So if x is less than or equal to 1, let's just return x, because that deals with those corner cases where the square root of 1 is 1 and the square root of 0 is 0. So let's get rid of that. And then um, else, we just want to implement that function that we just looked at. So let's come up with some initial estimate x n um, it could really be anything let's just set it to say half of the target that we're given so the integer target we're given is called x in the little algorithm we looked at was called s but it could be whatever we want and we now also want to keep track of how big the number is changing so basically we want to keep running the update until the change that we're seeing from one iteration to the next is small enough that we want to exit. Um, we don't know exactly what small enough should be in this case, but anything that's quite a bit smaller than one, we're probably then in the range where we're going to be close enough to an answer to round it to the nearest integer and get the right thing. So let's set the change equal to just one initially and but we're going to keep iterating until the change is smaller than that so while the change we're seeing is say greater than some value that's kind of small maybe 0 0.01 or something like that that should put us pretty close to what the real square root is then we will do the algorithm updates that we saw so we need to calculate what the next the next n is going to be, and that was equal to 1 half, so 0 0.5 times, times what the current value was, so xn, plus the actual number we're looking for, x, in the algorithm we looked at it was called s, but it's called x for us, divided by the current number. So this is what the next estimate is going to be. The change is now going to be equal to the old estimate minus 
the new one, so minus the next one, that's the change. And in theory, the change here could actually end up being negative it's, if it's being adjusted the right way for that to happen. So we actually want to take the absolute value of this to make sure that it's just the magnitude of the change and we don't get a negative value here. And then we just need to do the update. So after that, we'll update our xn to equal the next n. And this while loop now will just keep running and running and running and finding a better approximation of the square root until the change seen from one iteration to the next is less than 0.01. That should end up being a pretty close approximation to the square root. So at that point, we can just return. So we will return, we need the integer again, so we'll return the int of our xn that we are finding the approximation for. So this should essentially be a working implementation of that, uh, of this function here that was shown in Wikipedia. So that should also get us the square root. We'll, we'll see how good these Babylonians were with their algorithm efficiency, I guess. So let's uh, hit submit on that one, as long as we didn't make any errors in the code. Now, again, we didn't come up with a very smart kind of initial seed for our estimate of the square root. If we could come up with maybe a smarter way of doing that, this might be a little more efficient, but regardless, it should eventually find something that works. Let's pull over and we got a working result. It was 36 milliseconds. So the runtime was maybe a little bit slower than some of the Python built-in ones we used, but it's still relatively fast given that it was faster than 60% of submissions, and I'm guessing most people that submitted this one probably just did one of these more simple ones. And if we didn't want to be so exact in our approximation, we could probably get something faster. Like here, we're trying to find where the change is less than a very small amount. Well, if we maybe made this a little bigger, maybe the approximation wouldn't be quite so good, and it, it might actually fail to greater, but if we make that 0.0, one, we won't have to run as many iterations. Let's let's submit that and see how fast it is. So I guess that didn't make too big of a change, but it was slightly faster than the one where we had a few more iterations. So you could probably play around with this with the seed value and how many iterations and maybe get something that's about as good as these built-ins. So this is a case where the easiest solutions are probably what you should be using in practice. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel and try to find a new way to implement square root when it can be done so easily in the base language. But for the purposes of having a somewhat more interesting coding problem, I thought it'd be interesting to actually try to implement an algorithm that finds a square root mathematically instead of just using something baked into the language. So thanks for watching and keep coding.